Okay, let's try to keep this short. Hello, my name is Jack Etheridge. I'm going to talk really briefly about our Curie temperature demo. Um, essentially, there are a couple important things you have to know. Um, you have to know what a magnetic dipole is, which is basically a small loop of current. You can think of the atomic nuclei and the electrons as a, um, as a, as a current source, and so you can approximate classically. You can treat it as a, as a you know, some sort of current loop and therefore it has a magnetic dipole moment and yeah uh, so then what happens in ferromagnets is you have what are called domains which are regions of a lot of aligned magnetic dipoles which have an overall net magnetic dipole moment and what happens is these if a magnet is unmagnetized those domains are unaligned and so you overall have a zero net magnetic moment. But if you applied an external magnetic field, that would align those magnetic dipoles, and that's cool. Great. And here in the middle is a graph of, a, of an effect known as hysteresis, which is basically, it, mean, it comes from Greek, and it means to lag behind. And so our horizontal axis here is the external magnetic field, the y-axis, or the vertical axis, is the magnetic moment, or the magnetization of the magnet, or the per permanent magnet, and essentially what happens is the path that the magnet traces depends on the state, or the history of the magnet, so if it's up here, it will, if you decrease the external magnetic field, it will go this way, and then it will loop around the other way. Basically, it depends on the history. Great. Um, and our demo, this is not our demo, this comes from UC Santa Barbara, I think. Um, but it's basically the same thing, I mean, in essence. Essentially, we have a pendulum, we have a magnet hanging from it, in their case, they have a washer. Fine. And we have a permanent magnet sitting on the ground. That permanent magnet is heated, in their case it's by a blowtorch. That thermal energy will cause the net magnetic moment to decrease because the domains can unalign themselves because of thermal energy. And yeah, so we do it by boiling magnets and hot water. It's not great. I'll tell you why in a little bit here. But essentially we use, yeah, we use neodymium. Neodymium has a Curie temperature of like, I don't know, like 310 Celsius, something like that. Don't quote me on it. And the, but the effects of the, of the curve are noticeable around 80 degrees Celsius. So we figured boiling would be a, a sufficient source of heat. Um, and essentially, yeah, what's supposed to happen is that the, the pendulum bows inward. Um, and yeah, uh, and as, as you, if you don't hit the critical limit or the Curie limit, the magnet will actually realign itself as it cools back down. Um, so yeah, that's something you could show too. And yeah, essentially I wanted the magnet to be stronger. I would have liked a stronger heat source. Um, we didn't, I was very late to the party with Deep this year, so I didn't get the safety paperwork filled out. And yeah, that would have created a more noticeable effect. And uh, when we were swapping the cold magnets for the boiling magnets and back and forth, it created a lot of issue with um, repeatability of the demo. It was just not well set up. And so it was very, very particular about how things were placed, how you set the pendulum it was just not great so that if you could come up with a better solution that'd be great I might next year we'll see um, and I also would have liked to do a solenoid um, to show how you can magnetize and unmagnetize as you if you flip the current or if you flip the you know the, the permanent magnet around you could show all kinds of cool stuff you could even reach the Curie limit and then remagnetize the material if you so desired so that's it have a good one.